Welcome to the first of our mini lectures looking at the issue of voluntary reporting. Under the Substitute Decisions Act, it details the law of mental capacity, powers of attorney, guardianship, and substitute decision making. And the Substitute Decisions Act includes a section on voluntary reporting. And the voluntary reporting is done to the Ontario Public Guardian and Trustee. And the Public Guardian as Trustee is an organization which is part of government. It's actually a department of the Ministry of Attorney General's office who has the responsibility for taking care of those who have really no one else to take care of them in terms of decision making and finances. They take care of uh, children who don't have other people to take care of them and make decisions. They can take care of groups of people who may have capacity challenges, and they can also deal with estate issues. They are an organization of last resort, but they are also an organization where reporting, pursuant to the Substitute Decisions Act, on concerns about somebody who's believed to be mentally incapable and is experiencing or is at risk of experiencing serious harm to the property or to the person. That's the right organization to go to. So the Ontario Public Guardian Trustee can then investigate and they may take steps to become that person's guardian or they can take other steps to assist the person. Overall, it's really important to understand that the Public Guardian Trustee is not in the business of trying to get new clients. Rather, they are in the business of being decision makers of last resort. Under voluntary reporting for, quote, serious adverse effects to property, the section is 27. And the section reads, loss of a significant part of a person's property or a person's failure to provide the necessities of life for himself or herself or for dependents are serious adverse effects for the purpose of this section. So that means property or failure to provide the necessaries for themselves or dependents is what we're talking about here. If there is a concern under that, which is reported to the public guardian trustee, the public guardian trustee has a duty to investigate. And they have to see if the person is incapable of managing property and that these, quote, serious adverse effects are or might occur. In conducting an investigation under 27 sub 2, the public guardian trustee is not required to take any steps that, in their opinion, are unnecessary for the purpose of determining whether an application to the court is required. So they only have to do an appropriate amount of investigation. They don't have to go to the ends of the earth. And they need to figure out really what a judge would need to know. If pursuant to the investigation, there's a real reasonable concern to believe that a person is incapable of managing property, then they can move to appoint what's called a temporary guardian of property. And they can do that directly. They can apply to the court for an order as well. As you can imagine, property is not the only issue. Often people are more concerned with the person. And there's a similar section and the Substitute Decisions Act for voluntary reporting of, quote, serious adverse effects to the person, which is found under 62. And it reads, serious illness or injury or deprivation of liberty. Now, that's an important one to remember. Or personal security are serious adverse effects for the purpose of the section. I'll read that again. Serious illness or injury or deprivation of liberty or personal security are serious adverse effects for the purposes of this section. Now that may get you thinking about things like restraints. It may get you thinking about things like locked wards, etc. So the, again, the public guardian trustee has a duty to investigate. And in the course of the investigation, they just need to take appropriate investigatory steps. And again, 
if they believe, pursuant to their investigation, that there are reasonable grounds to, uh, to believe that a person is incapable of personal care and that the prompt appointment of a temporary guardian of the person is required, then the PGT can apply to the court for an order appointing the PGT as the temporary guardian. The public iron trustee, as I say, is not in the business of trying to get new clients. It's important to know that if you are reporting voluntarily, you do need to give information so that the PGT can investigate. And it reads that the public iron trustee shall investigate any allegation a person is incapable of managing property or personal care and serious adverse effects are occurring or may occur. So you need to give some evidence that the victim or the older adult or the person you're concerned about is incapable of managing either the property or personal care. There has to be some evidence for it. But it doesn't have to be a capacity assessment by a specialized assessor or it doesn't have to have other special detailed assessments. It can just be behavioral observations. It could be things from your um, daily connections with the person. It can be observations and evidence of other people. And for this, I'm, I'm referring to some slides that I'm going to post that have been created by ACE on the duty to report. So just to give you, I'm, I'm referring to that particular slide. When you are giving information for the Ontario Public Guardian Trustee to investigate, you got to kind of figure out what serious adverse effects means. Okay, so we've talked about that. We've talked about it can be for finance, it can be failure to provide the necessities of life, it can be loss of a big part of that person's property, it can be concern about lack of care of other dependents. These are all serious effects of the person, ir serious illness or injury, okay, so not a cold, but you know, pneumonia would be serious, deprivation of liberty or personal security. That's what we're talking about when we're thinking about how do you as social workers put together the evidence that you want to give to the public guardian trustee. Now, when we're talking about evidence, we're not talking about, you know, beyond any reasonable doubt. We're trying to figure out what your case is that's leading you to the concerns, and probably you've got some of that information as well. So what can you give the Ontario Public Guardian Trustee in writing or orally to support what you think is happening now or your concern that it will happen in the future? So in some of this first little mini lecture of the role of the public guardian trustee, it's important to remember this. There can be voluntary reporting to the public guardian trustee under the Substitute Decisions Act. If you're going to report, there is a broad range of things that you can consider in terms of actual loss or potential loss, actual harm or potential harm. You want to make sure that you have charted or have got good evidence to help the PGT in their investigation, but they will investigate, they have a duty to do so. There's a practical piece to this too. They are extremely busy and it can be difficult for them to manage workload. This doesn't mean they don't do a wonderful job, it doesn't mean that they don't try enormously hard. But we have to understand that they are a system also under pressure. So the PGT is an excellent place to know they are one of the places that you go to when you're trying to figure out what to do next in cases of suspected abuse or neglect.